Good morning, family. Y'all doing all right? Great. Well, I'm doing better now that I get to see you. I'm Pastor Nick, one of the pastors on staff here at BT Church. want to welcome all of you all to our 11 a.m. service. want to welcome all of our BT Online family, our BT Online campus. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And uh, I'm just so glad that we have made it to the last Sunday of 2020. Everybody said amen for that. Amen. I, I, I believe that uh, even with everything that this year has thrown at us, there are two important truthful declarations that we can make. Uh, that first declaration is this, that God is still good. I believe that with all my heart, that God is still good. Amen. And, and, and here's the second truthful declaration that I believe we can make. We're still here. Right? Amen. God is still good and I'm still here. And uh, that's enough to keep me going, all right? So this morning, we're going to continue our series uh, looking at uh, history through the Gospel of Luke. Just looking at Jesus' life and ministry from Luke's gospel of meet me in, in Luke chapter 3. Luke chapter 3. And while you're turning there, God has been just doing so much crazy stuff in the life of BT Church. Even in the pandemic year, God has been providing. Uh, if you were here on uh, Christmas Eve, uh, you would have heard that Pastor Chris shared that even though we're not going to meet our budget this year, it's looking like. Let me just say, it's looking like we're not going to meet our budget this year. By God's grace and uh, your continued giving and with uh, our, our responsible staff, we are still going to look like we're ending the year in the black, praise God. And so uh, I want you to know, BT Church, your church, we are blessed to be a blessing. And so uh, we sent off uh, over $40,000 to some other ministries and other missionaries around the world and church plants that we support to be a blessing to them. And that's crazy because even in the pandemic year, by God's grace, we were able to give almost $500,000 to missions this year. That's something we can celebrate about. God still provides even in pandemics. But that ain't even the craziest story I done heard. Of God's provision. We've been celebrating uh, BT watch parties in Spokane, Washington, and in Ontario, Canada, all, all because of, you know, due, due to the pandemic, not because of, but due to the pandemic, uh, when it forced us to go online, and, and, and God has expanded that. He's expanded our reach. It's almost like what God did in the book of Acts when, you know, they had to leave Jerusalem, and then they went to Samaria. It's like the gospel spreads. Wow. And so that's been happening. We heard some crazy news that there are some precious brothers and sisters in Bangalore that in India that get on at 9.30 p.m. their time so that they can stream our 9.30 a.m. service. So let's give God a praise for that. I welcomed them in the last service, but, but man, you don't know what God's going to do. It might be BT Bangalore. Y'all know how Pastor Chris rolled. <laughs> You know, we mess around and ship Danny to India. You never know what happened. <laughs> BT Bangalore. But we're excited about all that God is doing. Well, let's turn to our attention to our text for today. Luke chapter 3, verse 21. And today, we're going to preach from the subject, That's My Boy. Uh, this event in the life and ministry of Jesus uh, is a very memorable event. It is his baptism, and we're going to look at that. Before we read our text, though, I want to give you my sermon in a sentence, just in case you check out on me before I finish my sermon, okay? And here's the sermon in a sentence, okay? God the Father's overwhelming pleasure in his son Jesus overflows to those who trust Jesus by faith with their story. God the Father's overwhelming pleasure of his son Jesus overflows to those who by faith trust Jesus with their story. Now, that's a good sentence, but it may not make sense yet. So let's read our text and then unpack it, okay? 
Luke chapter 3, 21. You got it? All right. Praise God for all eight and a half of y'all. When all the people were baptized, Jesus also was baptized. As he was praying, heaven opened. And the Holy Spirit descended on him in a physical appearance like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. You are my beloved son. With you, I am well pleased. As, be, as he began his ministry, Jesus was about 30 years old and was thought to be the son of Joseph, the son of Heli, the son of Mathet, the son of Levi, the son of Melchi, the son of Jani, son of Joseph, son of Mattathias, son of Amos, son of Nahum, son of Elsley, son of Naga, son of Mab, son of Mattathias, son of Simeon, son of Josek, son of Jodah, son of Joanan, son of Rasha, son of Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, son of Neri, son of Melchi, son of Adda, son of Kosam, son of Elmadam, son of Ur, son of Joshua, son of Eliezer, son of Joram, son of Mathat, son of Levi, son of Simeon, son of Judah, son of Joseph, son of Jonam, son of Eliakim, son of Mela, son of Mena, son of Mattatha, son of Nathan, son of David, son of Jesse, son of Obed, son of Boaz, son of Salmon, son of Nation, son of Amenadab, son of Ram, son of Hezron, son of Perez, son of Judah, son of Jacob, son of Isaac, son of Abraham. Son of Terah, son of Nahor, son of Seru, son of Reu, son of Peleg, son of Eber, son of Shelah, son of Canaan, son of Oxfahad, son of Shem, son of Noah, son of Lamech, son of Methuselah, son of Enoch, son of Jared, son of Mahalalel, son of Canaan, son of Enos, son of Seth, son of Adam, son of God. Amen. Oh, y'all say for real. Y'all clap for the genealogies. Now, come on. Now, I know y'all say for real. Y'all clap for the genealogies. Praise God. When we look at this passage, it seems simple, right? A baptism and then a family tree. But there's some powerful truth in this text, and there are three major highlights that we're going to lift up out of this text. But before we do that, let's pray. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for the honor and privilege to preach your word. Lord, we pray that as we worship you right now through the hearing and preaching of your word for the next few minutes, by the power of the Holy Spirit, let your word be clearly communicated. Let Jesus Christ be highly exalted and let your people be beautifully blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. There are three highlights from our text that we want to lift up. The first highlight is this, the faithful fulfillment of Jesus. That's the first highlight, the faithful fulfillment of Jesus. We see... Jesus showing up on the banks of the Jordan River, observing his cousin John preach repentance to the people of Israel. John and Jesus lock eyes, and John says, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. But then something happens that surprises even John. Jesus approaches John and asks John to baptize him. Now, according to Matthew's gospel, John, he refuses, initially he refuses Jesus' request because John understands something. John understands that, hey, man, I just identified you as the lamb who takes away the sins of the world. And you can't take away the sins of the world if you are in sin. Jesus, this baptism is not for you. Because John's baptism was a baptism of repentance. When John, he was calling them to turn away from their selves and turn back to God, to turn away from their idolatry and turn back to God. He was calling them to repentance. And in John's mind, well, Jesus, you're the perfect spotless lamb. In my best English, you ain't got nothing to repent of. But Jesus does something to change John's mind. Jesus says that the roles don't need to be reversed, John. Jesus says, no, John, you need to baptize me. Jesus says, I want to be baptized. I need to be baptized to fulfill all righteousness. We see in this first highlight, the faithful fulfillment of Jesus. Why? 
Well, let's understand something. Everybody else being baptized that day was being baptized, repenting, showing an admission of their guilt. Jesus, when he was baptized that day, he was showing a demonstration of his obedience. That Jesus, the Son of God, who left glory to come to earth, he was not being baptized because of sins that he, that he himself committed. He was being baptized to show solidarity with sinners he came to save. What do you mean by that, Pastor Nick? Here's what I mean by that. Jesus understands this, that right standing with God, righteousness, that right standing with God, it only comes through death, burial, and resurrection. And that's what baptism symbolizes for us, right? It's, it's, it's the death of the old man, the burial of the old man, and the resurrection of the new man. And Jesus does this beautifully. He models this perfectly. The old church fathers used to say this, that when Jesus was baptized, he baptized the water that we would be baptized in. They could preach. Jesus was doing this to demonstrate his faithful fulfillment. In the words of Athanasius, he became what we are so that we might become what he is. Jesus, in displaying his faithful fulfillment in obedience to the Father and, and to, 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 to fulfill all righteousness through his actions and through his life, what was he showing us? He was showing us that as the Son of Man, he relates to us. Of God, only he can redeem us. Now, Jesus' baptism, while it demonstrates his solidarity with humanity, there is something that happens at his baptism that demonstrates his distinction from humanity. This brings our attention to the second highlight the public praise of the Father. I remember my baptism. I remember my baptism. I got baptized at Revelation Baptist Church in Southeast D.C. And our baptistry was in the basement, well, in the fellowship hall that was in the basement, in the floor. They used to lift it up. Some of y'all know churches like that. After my baptism, I got a card with some money in it. I got a Bible. I think I even got a Happy Meal that day. You know what I didn't get that day audibly? I didn't get the audible voice of God thundering from eternity saying, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. I didn't get that audibly that day. But I did receive it that day because of my connection with Jesus Christ. See, we see the public praise of the Father. There are memorable voices they're memorable voices. I, I, I think of Barbara Walters. I remember her voice. Anytime she's on, I, I know it's Barbara. James Earl Jones, you know it's James, right? Martin Luther King, you hear his voice, you know it's Martin. Mike Tyson. <laughs> you hear Mike, you know it's Mike. But all of those voices combined don't have the effect on humanity like God the Father echoing from eternity saying, that's my boy. This is my son and I am well pleased with him. This is important for us because God's testimony settles the matter. Up until this point in Luke's gospel, we have received the testimony from the angel Gabriel. We have received the testimony from Mary. We have received the testimony from Martha. We have received the testimony from the other angelic host that told uh, the shepherds. We have received the testimony of the shepherds. We have received the testimony of Simeon and Anna. We have received the testimony of John the Baptist, but now God's voice settles the matter. God steps on the witness stand 
of glory, raises his right hand and says, do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? So help you, you. And God says, I do. This is my son. And God says, He's not, he's not just my son, but I am well pleased with him. Notice this, family. Jesus hasn't preached a sermon yet. He hasn't performed a miracle yet. He hasn't even gone to the cross yet. But the father voices his pleasure for his son simply because he's his son. Some of y'all looking at me like Alice in Wonderland, like, what does this have to do with me, Pastor Nick? Here's the beautiful thing. When we are united with Christ by faith, guess what? We, too, experience the Father's pleasure, not because of our performance, but simply because we are his, because we are united with Christ. When God looks at you, when he sees you, when he looks at me, when he views me, guess what? He sees us like he sees his son. And I know that's hard for some of us to understand. That's why we have to receive it by faith. I know your life hasn't been what you think it should be, but, but guess what? The truth of the matter is this. When you are connected with Christ, just like God looked down at Jesus in that water and said, that's my boy, God looks at you. And he says, that's my son. That's my daughter. And I'm well pleased. Isn't that beautiful? That's the glorious truth of the gospel, you know. In church, I said this at, at 8 o'clock, and they were too asleep to really get it. So I said, I'm not going to say this at 930. So I'm going to save it for you. In church, we talk a whole lot about God taking away our sin. And we should. He takes away our sin. He takes away our son. But imagine, just imagine with me, that I owe a whole lot of money that I cannot pay. If you were to come to me and say, well, Pastor Nick, I'm going to take away all your debt. I would be very excited because my debt is gone. But guess what? I still don't have nothing in my pockets. Here's the beautiful truth of grace. Grace is not just about what God takes away. It's about what God gives us in the place of what he takes away. Yes, God takes away our sins, but guess what? What good is it for God to clean our slate and we just got a blank human slate? He don't do that. God takes away our sins and guess what he does? The faithful fulfillment of Jesus that, that, that fulfills all of righteousness. God gives us the righteousness of Christ. And this is this is big truth. It's good news. It's good truth that before Jesus ever preaches a sermon or performs a miracle, he experiences and hears the Father offer public praise saying, this is my son and I'm well pleased with him. It's not about just what he does. It's about who he is. We are connected. We are in relationship. It can't be broken. Here's an important note, too. It says that Jesus was about 30 years old when he began his public ministry. And, and in those times, uh, if you were going to be a priest, uh, you had to wait till you were 30 years old to really start your public ministry. So if you were going to be a successful priest, you had to wait. I believe that's an important word for some of us in here today. Because some of us, and I can't tell you how many times when I sit across the table from young adults and they're lamenting about their lot in life, and, and when it all comes down to it, that they just feel like that they are not as far as they should be. And I, I ask them, well, who told you you were supposed to be this far at this point? I ask them that, like, where'd you get that from? 
not saying that you can't have aspirations or desires or dreams or anything, but, but, but you are not in competition with anybody but yourself. Guess what? Jesus, the son of God, he didn't start public ministry till he was 30. If you're 23 and still figuring it out and you follow Jesus, I'm, I'm, I, I think you're good. You see what I'm saying? And you're going to have to wait, just like Jesus had to wait. But understand this, waiting time is not wasted time. Jesus didn't waste time while he was waiting because guess what? He stayed faithful even in quiet seasons. You see, success in the kingdom of God is not determined by how much we do. Success in the kingdom of God is determined by how faithful we are in whatever, in whatever we do. So if you go into school, faithfully go to school. If you flipping burgers, faithfully flip burgers. Are you hearing me? If you want to be in ministry but ain't no church called you yet so you got to work a job, faithfully work your job. We got to wait. Because guess what? Waiting, waiting does not hinder God from saying, that's my boy. That's my girl. Those are the first two highlights. I got to go fast. The last highlight is found in this genealogy. Y'all still with me? This genealogy, Luke let us know his motive early on in this gospel. He let us know. He said that he wanted to set out to write an orderly sequence of events. And so Luke gets down in the details. Luke, unlike Matthew, he presents a more formal and a more detailed genealogy. Matthew's de genealogy was, was stylistic. Matthew's genealogy was creative in that uh, Matthew started with Abraham and went forward to Jesus. But Luke gets into the weeds, and, and, and Luke is more formal with his genealogy. He, he, deals with, he deals with the content in the credits. He gets into the weeds of it all. Many scholars believe that, that, that Luke's genealogy traces Mary's line while Matthew's genealogy traces Joseph's line and, and, and all that good stuff. I don't have time to go into all that good stuff, but, but here's, here's what this shows me, that there's content in the credits. What do you mean by that, Pastor Nick? Here's what I mean, and then we're going to go home. When we go to the movies... We don't go to the movies or we don't have movies because of the popcorn or because of the comfy seats or because of the Dolby surround sound, right? We don't have the movies because of the crazy fancy projectors. That's not why we have movies. You know why we have movies? We have movies because of the credits. There are names in those credits, and, and those names point to why we get what we get on the screen. Are you with me? And I'm a nerd. I, I like reading the credits. I like knowing who sang what. I like knowing who the grip guy was. And I like, I even love when they put in the credits who was the little coffee runner. I like that they even give that joker some love in the credits. <laughs> put coffee runner number three. And I'm like, man, we got this amazing shot from this director because the coffee guy got his coffee there in time. See that? Content in the credits. Well, what this genealogy is, is the credits to the life of Jesus. What this does is it places Jesus in a historical, cultural context to say, guess what? Jesus didn't just pop out from nowhere onto the stage of human history. No, God was behind the scenes orchestrating everything, moving in the stories of people's lives so that we could get to Jesus. And what this shows me, what this genealogy shows me is this. When you look at names like Noah, and when you look at names like Aminadab, and when you look at names like Zerubbabel, and when you look at names like 
Abraham, when you look at those names, what these shows me, what this shows me is this. All of those guys, all of those names have some, some important highlights to their stories, but every story is incomplete without Jesus. Luke's gene- genealogy starts with Jesus and goes back. And Luke goes way back. How far back does Luke go? He goes back to Adam. Adam, the son of God. And what is, what is Luke trying to communicate by going back to Adam? Y'all ask all the right questions at 11 a.m. service. What Luke is showing us by going all the way back to Adam is this. That there was one guy, God's first earthly son, that messed it all up. And there's one man, the second Adam, the son of God, he going to make it all right. This is why I gave in the sermon in the sentence that God the Father's overwhelming pleasure in his son Jesus overflows to those who trust Jesus by faith with their story. This is why I said that because guess what? All of our stories are incomplete without Jesus. All of our stories without Jesus, they stop with Adam. Everything's messed up. When we give our stories to Jesus, trusting in him, depending on him, leaning on him, when we give our stories to Jesus, guess what happens? He makes it all right. And how does Jesus make it all right? He makes it all right through his death, his burial, and his resurrection. So that those who trust Jesus by faith, can receive the affirmation from the Father just like Jesus did on the day of his baptism when God broke open the heavens and shouted out, that's my boy. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for the opportunity to preach your word. I pray that God, as we have received from you. I pray that as we have heard your word, that it would fall on good ground. And I pray that we are able to bear much fruit for your glory. Lord, I pray if there's somebody here today under the sound of my voice that has not trusted Jesus, God, I pray that right now, by faith, you would move them to respond to the Savior. In Jesus' name, amen.